Today, I want to tell you about this apple and habanero mead that I made that's pretty freaking good. Let's get started. So this mead right here is an apple and habanero mead. It is those two combinations, apple, which I love, and habanero. So uh, I decided to make this because I had a bunch of dried habaneros from my friend doing the most, and I love apple. And uh, I'll go ahead and throw the recipe up here. So the recipe is, as you see, and I'll go ahead and tell you that I used a combination of honeys and I think you could repeat this without the combination of honeys, but I'm gonna give you my take on it with this. So this is the recipe I'm stating. I am, I think it's great. Um, so as you can see up on the screen right now, it is two and a half pounds of blueberry honey, uh, five grams of Imperial W04 or W04, three pounds of honey crisp apples that I had frozen and then I put into the mead and one pepper in the secondary, it was just an entire dried pepper. Um, you could of course do this with apple juice and I'm actually pretty pleased how this turned out without apple juice in it, but I would be curious to see using at that as a base instead of water. Um, I also back sweetened with some honey. I used raspberry honey and orange blossom to back sweeten. So that's the different varietals of honey you see. And there was that dried habanero. So I'll go ahead and tell you how I did this. I basically mixed together my honey, my water, and my yeast. And I put my apples in the primary. I, I did this because I wanted more of a tannic value from the apple, and uh, I think it turned out to be pretty good. So uh, I'd frozen the apples too. That's like a tip to get more apple character out of things. Anyways, went ahead and mixed that all together. That went through the primary. It started at 1.054. After the primary fermentation, we were at 1.000, which leveled out, not surprising, the W04 kind of, that, that's what it does. It, it, it goes through the sugars it has, and this was pretty low. Um, at that point, I decided, okay, I need to go ahead and add my pepper in. So what I did was I took, and I, I took one of my dried peppers and I cut it in half, and I actually uh, tried to well, I just I basically just cut it half in half and then I put it into the mead. Um, that sat in for a grand total of six days. So here's my little PSA. When you're putting peppers, hops, anything that's a prominent, dominant flavor, make sure you are watching it and that you are not just letting it go forever. The longer the pepper sits in there, the more flavor it obviously gives. So that's one thing to note. Um, and it was only in there for six days. I pulled it out after taste testing and deciding, trying to figure out when it was best. I pulled it out and I tried to do this like weird method of, uh, it, since I didn't completely cut it in half, I tried to fish it out with uh, an auto siphon, the top of the auto siphon. Didn't really work. I ended up having to basically uh, do something else. So that pepper came out and I tasted it. It felt, it tasted great. Apple character was, there but is a little bit dry um, and I think sweetness was going to help with the apple character profile. The habanero pepper was pretty uh, well tempered. It wasn't like so in your face that you just kind of want to you know fall apart. Um, so at that point I was like okay I am ready to go ahead and back sweeten this. I chose to back sweeten this via um, using potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite which are stabilizers. They essentially just make the area in the mead, um, not a great place for fermentation. And they kind of say, hey, yeast, you're not, you're done. If there are yeast currently in there, they could still chew through whatever was left, but because this was 1.000, had nothing left, the yeast were done. So when I racked it over, stabilized it, I created an environment that the yeast would not be able to re-ferment in, aka stabilizing. You could do this in a multitude of ways, including these right here, if you'd like to stabilize otherwise. Stabilized it, then added 5.3 ounces of raspberry honey and five ounces of orange blossom honey. That kicked the final gravity up to 1.020. And that's what we have here. We have this uh, basically, I have to remember now, seven-ish percent mead and back sweetened to, to 1.020 gravity. Let's taste it. Mm. It's definitely helpful. The combinations of honey add fruitiness. Ooh, that pepper. Yeah, it's definitely, you could feel it like it was attacking my tongue. It seems like a weird way to say it, but it was like, I could feel the, the burn. Oh man. So fruity, 
sweet apple characters there. It's, it's kind of hidden uh, a little bit within the other honey characters I use. The raspberry has bright notes, the orange blossom has bright notes. So we're getting citrusy. Oh man, this thing is solid. It's not clear. Um, that's because I didn't use pectic enzyme. Um, I honestly didn't try very hard to clear it. Uh, what I ended up doing, well, I, I guess I tried to clear it, but I didn't try very hard. I took and actually put um, some bentonite into this, which if you know what bentonite is, it's this kind of clay and it basically helps to clear things out. So I added the bentonite in, in hopes that that would bring out or help it clear up some. It did a little bit, it really didn't do too much. Um, I could have gone through some other avenues to try and, and clear it up. I decided not to. Clarity is not the end of the world for me. At this point, if I was commercial, probably a little more important. So with it, even with it not being clear, um, we are currently setting at uh, 50 days old. So not super old, but it, it is very well tempered. The heat from the pepper is nice. It's just a good combination of flavors. Uh, I would be curious to see what um, apple juice provides for this thing. Of course, apple juice allows for a higher ABV mead because generally speaking, apple juice has sugars in it. So whenever you decide to put apple juice in, you're raising your gravity unless you water it down. But what's the point of using apple juice if you water it down? So um, I probably would not have been able to keep this at the seven-ish percent mead um, had I gone with not, but had I gone with apple juice. If I stick with this thing, I can stay with about 7%. So this is like a session mead, which basically means it's kind of not necessarily a one-off, but lower ABV, pretty crushable, those things. This could be repeated with clover honey, with wildflower honey, with whatever varietal, varietal honey you want to use. What's important is that you, um, you try to pronounce the apple character. I believe that the yeast I used did a good job of keeping the apple character, that uh, W04. And uh, I, I also believe that it, I will say, I also believe that it helped honey character thrive and because it didn't really ferment too quick. The primary to secondary state was about 20 days, which is in the grand scheme of fermenting, it's enough time for the honey to be chewed through, but not so much that it's blasting through. Um, I did, oh, I, I forgot to say, I did add nutrients to this. I added some fermato that was in the recipe. So this is, again, not clear. You can repeat this with clover honey, wildflower honey. Essentially just take everything, all the honey sources I provide in this recipe right here, and then, uh, of course, supplement them out. Um, the back sweetening is very important here. I do believe that, that it pronounces more uh, apple character and coarse floral character and those things. The body on it's nice, all of that. I highly, highly recommend you to try this recipe. And um, I make a lot of recipes. If I were ranking this one in my top five, um, it's pretty quickly falling in there. It's probably, I mean, I've got, I've got ones above it for sure, but I would say it is four or five for me. And of course that's a revolving list because over time I make stuff and then stuff gets bumped down or pushed up. But at this current moment, this is probably number four or five of my favorite. There's some that are just too hard to beat. I've really enjoyed this. I hope that you will check out the recipe. It's down below. There is, of course, uh, links to a store and a bunch of stuff like that. Everything you do goes to support the channel, including liking and subscribing, all of that stuff. Um, we are on the push for 30K. I don't know uh, at what point when this goes out where we're at subscriber-wise, but I wanna get to 30,000 subscribers. It just seems like it'd be a fun, um, fun uh, milestone to get to. Um, I'm very thankful for everybody who watches these. Thank you for spending time. Thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, you just being here is, is, means the world to me. And I, well, I really hope that you understand how much um, your time means to me. So I hope you will recreate this. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cheers.